welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews and to another review video here on the channel. This is kind of a cross between a series review and a rapid fire review. Rapid fire reviews are where I try and review things, new releases, as soon as I've read them. Series reviews is where I try and recap whether you should read a series or not. This is a somewhat a combination of both because I recently read the Golden Enclaves by Naomi Novik. This is the third book in the Scholomance series, which you know, you've read the title, you've seen the thumbnail, it's all fine. Um, this came out on the 27th of September, I think. It is the 8th of October when I'm filming this, so I'm a little bit behind schedule, but I was on holiday, so never mind. This is the new release, but I realised that I never actually filmed a review video for The Last Graduate, uh, but I do have a video up for A Deadly Education. And that Deadly Education video is getting on a little bit now. It is actually probably one of the most watched videos on my channel, and it still gains traction to this day. And some things in the series that I brought up in that video have been addressed, uh, and some things haven't, and I just realised I should probably do a little bit of a recap about whether I think you should read the whole series, uh, and kind of give you my thoughts on the Golden Enclaves as a whole. So for the sake of uh, people who don't want to be spoiled, who are thinking about reading the series, I'm going to start by talking about the series as a whole, and then I will do a little bit at the end that's just about the Golden Enclaves and the ending of the series and whether I think you should read it. I'm not going to spoil anything except for where book two ends in that section. I'm not going to spoil Golden Enclaves for you, I'll come on to it when I talk about it then. We'll refresh. For the meantime, not going to spoil anything, just going to talk about the Skullmance as a trilogy. I'm also going to triple check that it is a trilogy. Concludes. Yes, that's what we like to see. I've talked about spoilers, but I'm gonna do some other quick disclaimers before we start. I think I had a review copy of at least The Last Graduate. Um, they were both digital. All of these physical copies I'm showing you, I bought myself, regardless of where books come from. Nobody's paying me to talk about books and all opinions are my own. I'll link the story graph for book one below if you wanna check that out. They'll have user-generated content warnings and some other people's reviews if you wanna get a more mixed, a view of opinions from people who've read it at different times. So the three books in the Scholomance series are book one, A Deadly Education, that came out in 2020, The Last Graduate came out in 2021, and The Golden Enclaves came out in 2022. I'm gonna put the these two up behind me, just for, for art's sake. I'm gonna put them in a place where they're gonna be visible. The Golden Enclaves is really hard to get on camera. It's gold and nice, don't worry about it. If you wanna hear a summary of book one and kind of the background and the idea of a scholomance in folklore, you could go check out my original video. There's some other stuff in there that's not so great, but I think that research was done well. Uh, and essentially in this world, uh, magic, magical children, magical people uh, encourage mouths to turn up, which are little beasties which will try and kill you. Because people got a bit fed up with their children being eaten, they decided to stick them all in the Skullamance, which is a school where they can learn magic and learn to defend themselves from creatures that are less than nice and uh, basically get through it and if you get out the other side you're more powerful. It's it's a, a, not a nice place to be and our main character Gladriel or Elle is there and she, her type of magic seems to want her to be a evil sorceress, just the most evil, evil sorceress there could ever have been. When she tries to get spells, they all turn out to be very, very nasty spells that she doesn't particularly want to use. But Elle is determined to not fall afoul of bad magic. She wants to be good. She wants to just get out of the Scholomance and get on with her life. But in a school where you graduate or you die, Orion Lake, the handsome, best monster hunting guy, is determined to keep Elle alive for some reason. We follow Elle in the school in book one and the ending of book one influences books two, the ending of book two influences book three. It's a trilogy it flows through, you know how they work. I don't want to spoil the end of book one for people who haven't read it yet. Reviewing series is hard. Overall, throughout this series, there are some things I like. Uh, I really like the way that this book tackles the idea of recognising your own privilege, as well as recognising privilege in others and trying to help them to realise that. Uh, I think it does a really good job of that. There are some elements that perhaps are questionable. We'll come on to some of the controversies a little bit later, um, but overall I think that that theme really carries through all three books. I think it's particularly prevalent in book one, it's particularly prevalent in book three. Book two, there's some other stuff going on. I think that if you're looking for a book that's gonna kind of tackle what does this look like and can I address classic one class inequality in this school setting. That would be interesting. Uh, I also think the magic is very cool and the magic continues to be cool from book one to book three. I think as as there typically can be, there's a little bit of a change in the way that it's used throughout the three books. I think it has the most interesting structure when you're getting it set up at the start of book one, but it's always used in a more interesting way by the time we get to book three. I'm not fussed about it, but it is that typical we've set up a magic system thing of it's just the most interesting when you're learning how you do it. Uh, and once you know how it's done and you're just sort of building on that, it can get less interesting. Foundry Side is another example of a book that does that. 
it's how magic systems go almost always i can't think of an exception right now so let's just say it's the rule throughout the series the characters are really good both Elle, our main character the romantic interest orion and the other side characters i found them very enjoyable one of the things that i have to say is that my biggest not my biggest criticism one of my larger criticisms about a deadly education was that it was not gay in any way shape or form and to be fair a lot of people commented on that video being cross that i'd criticized it for that you know what? Shush. It's fine. I'm allowed to criticise things if I want to. Um, they did, however, not necessarily fix that, but you could definitely feel that that was a criticism that had got through. Uh, and in books two and three, I definitely felt like that improved. I think this is a series that has really grown with the fans, which is really interesting. Maybe something to talk about at another time. I don't necessarily know that this is the place, but I, I find it hard to believe that without that, not not from me specifically, I'm not suggesting that I changed this, but without the pressure from people who were saying like, hey, this felt like it could have been, but it wasn't. I don't think we would have got to where we got to in later books with, with some of the representation. I just don't, I don't think we do. Is it a stellar representation? Not exactly. It's not, you know, amazing, but it's, it's there. And I'll take that for now. <laughs> After so many years of being queer baited by Naomi Novik. <laughs> I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I also think the voice of these books is one of the stellar things about it. Elle's voice is just wonderful. They're really snarky but they have a lot of heart in them and just the as a whole I think they're really enjoyable to read. They're not gonna change your world. They're not gonna influence your life in such a way that you're at the bottom of the stairs weeping because you just can't face how the Scholomance ended but they are enjoyable reads and honestly sometimes that's all I'm looking for. There's a lot of crossover between these and YA. I think whether they are YA or not not for me to decide. I think it depends how they're marketed and they've been marketed in various different ways. Put your opinions down below. Do you think they're YA? Do you think they're adult? And do you think that they should have been nominated for the YA category for the Nebulas? Was it the Nebulas? The Hugos. The awards. I'm blithering. So I want to very briefly touch on the controversy in this series, which is in book one, there were some somewhat ignorant comments made, uh, particularly about like health and hygiene and hair. And you can look up all of these controversies. It's not hard to find. Um, I'm not the best person to speak on them. I did vaguely mention some of it in my initial video where I talked about how um, Elle as a main character is half Indian. And that's not really something that the book does that much with. And I still don't necessarily think that that was changed too much throughout the series. I think there was an attempt to be a bit more sensitive, however. And they did, I believe, reprint Deadly Education with some changes in and possibly a different start page. I don't think that's my edition. No, I think I have like one of the first printings of it. You can make your own decisions on that. I'm not going to make them for you, whether you want to support this or not. That's your business. And I'm very happy for you to make that decision by yourself. <laughs> Overall, before I come on to just talking about the Golden Enclaves, do I think you should read this? Do I think this is a series that's worth reading? Depending on your comfortability with how a lot of the stuff of the book one was handled. Um, I think that they are a good series. I think they make up for three really good books, enjoyable, fun time, magical schools are always going to be fun, uh, especially in this time where we don't have a lot of magical school content that isn't tainted somewhat. I think that uh, this is a really good time. I think that if you like romance, if you like school stories, if you like friendship, if you like magic systems, if you like kind of dark academia in the sense of critiquing academia and meritocracy and all this stuff, I think this is a good example. I think you would have fun. That's kind of my, my main piece on that. Let's talk just about the Golden Enclave. So if you are a person who doesn't want to know what happens at the end of book two, basically, is if you haven't read up to the end of book two, just here, don't, don't continue on with this video, pause this video, go read book three, come back when you've read, no, go read book two, come back when you've read book three. <laughs> we'll have a good chat then. So I'll just give them a minute to leave. This is the minute to leave dance. Have they left? Excellent. So I'm talking to you as a person who has either finished Golden Enclaves already or who is about to start it and is wondering whether they should go ahead and finish it or not. So I'm not going to spoil the ending of the Golden Enclaves by any means, but I do want to talk about it because I think it's important to talk about it. So books one and two are very much set in the Scholomance because you cannot leave without dying. <laughs> Makes sense makes complete sense. Whereas book three, we've gone outside of that. And I think that's why it feels somewhat disconnected from the first two books. And that for some reasons, I would say maybe do a reread of The Last Graduate before you jump into The Golden Enclaves, if you haven't already. Um, just because they do flow from one end to the other, but the third book is very different in the sense that we are expanding the world, we're looking at much more, we're no longer in this single location. And I found that very interesting because so often with uh, YA trilogies in particular, but trilogies generally where we have a very solid setting for a first book. Uh, that then falls apart in book two and book three, we get outside of that. So there's an expansion of the world there. Whereas in this, we've just had two books in this very insular location and then one separate. And I don't really know how I felt about it overall. I'm still kind of figuring out my feelings on it. I think for the most part it works because there is that direct continuity from book two into book three. There's not a time jump in the way that I think there could have been potentially. Um, I think that makes it work. However, 
if you are a person for whom the main selling point of the Scholomance was going to classes, learning what they are learning, doing the school thing, perhaps book three will be less enjoyable for you. I personally found that the story of book three was really good and it made me realise that even though books one and two are in the school, they are very, very separate stories. And that's one of the things I like about this series as a whole is that each of the books do pair off quite neatly. Obviously book one and two are going to flow into each other. Yes, there are huge cliffhanger endings in both book one and book two, but I still think that the stories themselves actually pair off quite neatly uh, and it's just that last little bit to hook you into the next book. Makes sense. And I think that in terms of themes, in terms of ideas and in terms of the voice, there is a huge amount of continuity into book three, it's just that that school setting isn't there. So if that's somewhat disappointing to you, I would still say it's worth reading. You're just not going to get that scholomancy feel to it. As a whole series, having read book three, do I think this series is going to change the world? No. Did I want it to? Not really. I wanted it to be a fun series that would give me some feelings, give me some enjoyment, give me some catharsis on the way out, and it definitely achieved that for me. So do I think you should read all of these having read book three, yes. I think that's everything I wanted to say on this. I'll probably think of about 20 things when I'm done. I didn't script this because it was going for like that rapid fire approach where I'm just trying to get my feelings out, but in hindsight maybe I should have done this was a little bit waffly. If you want a bit more of a structured video, maybe let me know and I'll, I'll do something if people ask me nicely enough. Have you read these? Do you have plans to? Have you bought one of the many special editions of the Golden Enclaves? Let me know which one's your favourite down in the comments below. If you haven't already, while you're commenting, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. Uh, you can also follow me on social media, come hang out on Discord where we have chill chats about books, or join my Patreon, which is a place where people who support the channel can get early access to my videos and exclusive bonus content. That is in the description if you would like to join their number. Thank you so much for watching this somewhat waffly video. I've got one more video to film today and then I'm going to collapse in a heap. So thank you so much. That's all from me, and I will see you in the next one. It's going to be some bloopers now. The Golden Enclaves by... I nearly said N.K. Jemisin then. Very much not by N.K. Jemisin. And The Golden Enclaves came out in 2023. 2022? What's happening? Why can't I count? Is that direct quanti continuity? <laughs>